I have done nothing. Uh, you see, we 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 had the general survey. Was that a level later? <laughs> we, we had you, are, you are now one of those he has sent a note to. <laughs> but you are, you remember your role in this Oscar? No, I had no role. You were the one who called me, <laughs> and you said Moses Vyaranga is looking for you. He that was, was looking. That for was you. your role. <laughs> So I look so for Oscar, I work at a, country, a role in this. Yes. So Oscar, Oscar called me and he said Moses Yoranga is looking for you. He was looking for you. Since Moses is our brother, I got in touch with Moses. And Moses told me that uh, he has a document. He actually called it a document <laughs> from General Sare. And you know Sare has ever given me a document when I was working at the Observer. Mm. He, his argument then was that uh, in Tandikwa had worked and actually a lot of money had been recovered but government technocrats were lying that uh, that it was not enough I spoke to him before he resigned I am actually the one who wrote the story that Sare is said to resign and he called me through Juma Seiko to tell me that actually in Tandikwa had worked and he sent me a, a detailed document to show that money had been recovered since then we've never spoken <laughs> so you you told me to call Vyaranga you called Vyaranga Vyaranga sent me what you call a document was a, a, note. a notebook uh, a, a notebook a silent note he has been a, writing a, a sleeping okay. note it's a sleeping with a good handwriting he mm. warning me that he will take me to court if i stop tarnishing his name right have you I, been tarnishing his name i was on tv and bs on tuesday and I used the nerds as an illustration to get people to understand why M7 is attacking uh, UCD uh, every day, something he has not done. And I said that uh, <coughs> for Sare and his group to go and take over nerds, M7 launched a campaign. Every day he was attacking nerds, how they are doing nothing, parading uh, officials from nerds, threatening to take them to jail. The conclusion of that uh, relentless attack against NADS was the creation of Operation Wealth Creation headed by Geno Sare. And uh, <clears throat> that Operation Wealth Creation, the thing that I said that may have annoyed Sare, and I am happy they did, was that, <coughs> yeah, was that... And uh, you are happy they did? Yes was that uh, as soon as operation because you see oscar the, the public may not know seven created operation wealth creation and uh, what he called the uh, standing order procedure standing order procedures that is the something he created as a legal basis for Sare's outfit and then he authorized them to go and use mad and uh, money to do distribution, including uh, ambiguous things like a strategic intervention, that there will be there will be money for them for strategic intervention, and these are written things I'll, I'll share with you after the capital gang mm -hmm. the documents you may have forgotten. So I said uh, that the first activity, as soon as Sarah's operation with the creation was created and went into NADS, and NADS remain as a secretariat, but they created the codes within the budget. Uh, I don't have to read them, and. Uh, agriculture output and strategic intervention and they are putting money uh, coded as i have said for sare and his group to direct where it should go the first activity and you remember i told sare when he appeared on this show was that uh, he removed 97 billion shilling and this is captured in the report of the auditor general to buy pickups and i said on the tv program that the first activity of creating wealth by Sare was to buy pickups using 97 billion shilling to distribute to veterans, army commanders who were disgruntled. That, by the way, was the time of uh, Amama Mbavaz. And M7 feared that Mbavaz was teaming up with Tinyefuza and they were meeting uh, veterans of Ruero. You know, M7 will not fear Ocheno. But the moment he's told that. Uh, Commanders of Ruero, a specific unit, are angry. They are teaming up with Mbabazi. It is a that's why he, his harassment of Wesley is unequal, because Wesley kept saying that I have uh, support in the military. So the 
operation of sare first wealth creation activity remove of 97 billion shilling to buy pickups that's what i said on and that's what i annoyed him but it's not my information it is information of the auditor general that as soon as they arrived this is what they did and sare says no 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 because he, i did not touch money i was not the procurement officer but they created codes and an ad that I'll share uh, uh, with everybody who wants to know. And those codes you are controlling by Sare. Because the NAD is the National Agricultural Advisory, National Agricultural Advisory Services. Their work was not to buy pickups and then hire drivers, then maintenance cost, then this and that. So that's what Sare must understand. That he's already been audited by the Auditor General. That information is before Parliament. And it will remain forever whether sare is there whether semuju is there those who are going to read the uh, reports of the auditor general will know that as soon as sare arrived there the first thing but i know what annoyed him oscar what annoyed him is that uh, his brother yoel museven kaguta tibuhavurwa has launched an attack against ucda and throughout he says he praises uh, sare that uh, uh, the, 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 the coffee boom that you see is as a result of uh, intervention by Operation Wealth Creation created by the 2014. So he now attributes the success in the in the coffee sector to Sare. The same thing by the M7 tactically did with the Ruero. If you read M7 his book, all the successes in Ruero <coughs> are success, successes headed by Sare. You know when Sare went to Masindi? You know when Sare went to Hoima? You know when Sare went here? Uh, you, you, you're saying so there's something wrong with that? This is absolutely. You need to read the Pekos Kutesa's book. One mm -hmm. of the biggest mm -hmm. successes. Mm -hmm. book. No, no, no. Uh, Pekos Kutesa is dead. Mm. Kutesa says uh, when they attacked Masindi, where they got a lot of arms, actually including uh, robbing banks. Sare was the overall commander, but he was warning them against the attack because M7 had said you attack before down, but they arrived uh, almost at down. And then M7 calls Sare, who was hiding in a hill far away from the battlefield, that please they should not attack. You're not saying the guy's a coward, are you? Sare calls, uh, calls uh, Pekos Kutesa, who was now the field commander, and he said, Muse has said we don't attack. And Pekos said, You see, where we are positioned, we cannot withdraw, we'll be finished. He said, okay, you will take responsibility. This is what Pekos writes. You will take this. So the person who took responsibility for attacking, so what eventually was a success. In his book, Museven writes about Sare and what Sare Well, they did. talked about it, but they, 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 have you gotten yourself a good lawyer? Because it looks like you, are, you have not stopped. I, I, Oscar, I can tell you Sare cannot go to court because he has no name to protect. Hi. And it will be an opportunity, I will thank God, if Sare ever steps in a court. And we'll go back to the days hi, when, hi, hi, when, hi. when he was receiving uh, bribes, hi, yeah. when so, he was, was in northern Uganda. So order when, when his three-year-old son was me, operating uh, an aircraft going me, to Congo, where we are choosed and actually we lost a case. Let me stop we are there, paying so. Congo me, 200 million US dollars. As a result of Sare's so intervention, so, so I am he saying, doesn't take you I will court. thank God if Sare steps in a court, yeah. and all these things of anyway. what he did in the Congo comes, and we bring. A, but a, Lydia is a lawyer here. The, if he yes. takes you to court, yes. I yes. don't need a lawyer. This is a, an obvious case. But he's going to take you to court on one specific item. You yes. won't be able to squeeze in all the. No, no. If it is defamation, yeah. maybe they can. I don't know if uh, criminal yes. defamation. If, if criminal defamation is still exists, they can use. But let me state. tell you what OWC has said. OWC was we wish to address and clarify as following. Uh, clarify what? A video circulating on social media in which Honorable Semu Junganda in an interview with a local te television station makes statements regarding the procurement of vehicles for OWC. His presentation was a false statement and ill-informed aimed at discrediting OWC and defaming its chief coordinator, General Saleh. Uh, goes in about how it was uh, established is number one. Two, the vehicles deployed for OWC operations, both at the Secretariat and Nationwide, were procured by NADS in strict accordance with PPDA uh, guidelines within a transparent public finance framework. The process followed Uganda's established regulatory frameworks and legal standards reflecting our commitment to public <coughs> accountability. General Salim Saleh was never involved in procurement, nor was he ever a supplier. 
those interested in all nerd suppliers are encouraged to check the PPDA database, which he was telling you to do. Accordingly, to Honorable Samuel misinformation, the total procurement cost is 97 billion, which is a total misinformation because the procurement records, according to NADS, is 28 billion. And that information is available to the public. Uh, and it, this expenditure was necessary and justified to support field officers who have been instrumental in distributing agricultural inputs to beneficiaries and supporting communities nationwide in efficient and effective manner. Claims of inflated costs are unfounded and lack factual basis and are meant to confuse the public. You mean that thing so, is still existing? Therefore, this is, I skipped a few more, therefore statements were under Samuju suggesting that OWC was established for pi personal finance gained by General Sally are both untrue and baseless. OWC was created to transform the agricultural Very sector. Long. Long. That's a statement you mean, sent uh, by you one mean, of our regular listeners, uh, uh, Noah Whitney. It, it is not by oh, because I was it wondering is, if they are still existing. First of all, they were illegal. And, and they were illegal uh, created and, and, and they should never have been there even for one second. Well, okay, so uh, hopefully, we hope you will not go to court. Uh, no, no, I am praying, Oscar. Mm. Please don't pray. I want to go to court with Sare. Anyway, <coughs> yes. Um, Lydia, I, 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 I want us to go to Kisoro. Samuju has had his say, and we hope General Sare doesn't take him to court or does not write him another note. Whenever he writes notes to people, people keep quiet. Mm -hmm. so, mm, he has written a few notes. Uh, why, why but on another why? show, this will last a bit longer. Mm. Yeah, no, they usually are short like that. Mm -hmm. So, Lydia, congratulations on a uh, Chisoro mm -hmm. win, the double win. Uh, well, I don't know if it's a double win, but uh, yesterday I was in the company of uh, Nobat Mao, German, and he said NRM was beaten thoroughly mm -hmm. uh, by in, in Chisoro, and a lot of people wondered, what do you mean NRM was beaten thoroughly? <laughs> So I'm here to say congratulations to you, Lydia. Why didn't DP feel the <laughs> candidate? Because he's a president general. Why does he talk about NRM where he serves as a cabinet minister? So you mean we, we, we should not speak about NRM? I mean, no. I mean, you first of all begin with yourself. <laughs> why, why do you want to celebrate our losses mm -hmm. when you participate in our gains? We, we are in government, you are there. When we lose, you don't cry with us. What type of person is that one? <laughs> Well, uh, there were a few Oscar commentators. I'm also asking, I'm surprised that we have such many beings in Uganda. Uh, we so, are, whereas we are congratulating. I've come from Chisoro. Yeah, we saw you on TV. And the Nalem flag bearer, whom I went to support, lost. Uh, she was number two. Who are we then? The oh election. So which means. I, I, so was, does that mean Mao had a point that the NRM flag bearer was beaten hands down? I don't know about Mao. Maybe you enjoy conversation. <laughs> if you want to talk about Mao, let him come to the show and Okay, let me talk, talk about, about. Let me talk about Chisero and the NRM. In Chisero, in, in Chisero. And, uh, was the NRM beaten? Yes, the NRM party lost. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you what okay. you want to hear. <laughs> the, we had the NRM primaries where eight candidates participated and the flag bearer was Honorable Rose Kabagin. And uh, after the primaries and the nomination by the Electoral Commission, I traveled to Kisoro to campaign for the flag bearer. And when we got there, there were other candidates. I, I think actually UPC had a candidate. A fantastic um, candidate, yes. Noop had a candidate and FDC had a candidate. Uh, very nice ladies and uh, I, I even participated in the I was in the audience during the TV talk show. Mm -hmm. They put up a good uh, good show and a good debate. Then a rem candidate whom I went to support lost. The, I comforted her. I said, Rose, you know when you come for a campaign uh, there is a winner, there is a loss, so we have lost. And uh, the one who won, uh, Aki Feza, Grace Gavirano, she was independent she had a radio so the radio lady uh won and mm. we have uh, radio I, as a symbol uh, congratulated I, I i congratulated rose and and that, that's it but for me 
I go to support NRM candidates who have been delivered to us through a process. That's the structure of the party and the process of the party. We put in our best foot, we win, we celebrate. When we lose, we reorganize ourselves and look at the next steps. So um, I want to also take this opportunity again to congratulate uh, member-elect Rosie Akifeza Angabirano, the lady of the radio. She was independent with the, with the radio. I think she put up a good campaign. When I go to the ground, there were children, eh? school children, when, when, when they are going home, they were singing Akifeza. I found that very intriguing. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the everywhere in the town mm. in the community but what caught me first were the children uh, I later got to know that she has been uh, working a lot with children mm -hmm. but also even her work in UNHC she was, a, she was a UN staff but she, she was with, dealing with children and I think that's where her passion is it was so visible <laughs> so I don't know what else you want to tell me uh, mm. Oscar but that, that's what what happened in Chisoro well, some people are disgruntled that, that the president had also invited when he went to, to campaign, as he usually does for candidates. There was a bit of disgruntlement that he campaigned he had, for both the yes, independent and campaign NRM. for the, 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 the no one who is not NRM. I, I was in Kisoro myself, mm. so I have first hand information. The president did not openly campaign or campaign on the forum where he was for no, you have used the right word in here, so don't <laughs> for, the, for the independent he campaigned for the flag bearer <laughs> but what 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 happened which people may feel uncomfortable but that's sort of them any that we we should know by now the first thing the president did when he arrived in so even before he said that he made a call twice he talked twice to Muse uh, Mateke. You all know Philemon Mateke. He's not a new name in Uganda, but I think when you're entering Kisoro, he's the president of Kisoro. He's a very respected person in Kisoro, and for information, he's the chairman of the NRM of Kisoro district. But he was not happy. Maybe I should say this to the listeners. He was not satisfied or not happy with the outcome of the primaries. And those of you have been following our party, I realize that many people follow the NRM party more than their own party, like how your preamble messages were. Did you, did you so you the, the, you the, the primaries, the yeah. Yeah. But you should also remind you about we your own party. We were we we not only, we are not only following you guys. So, but we are made to sing UPC songs in primary schools because they oh, are the okay, party. Okay, the okay, okay. I, I, I take it. Don't, we are, we are don't forcing us to you sing. You we have never did. Enough. We never forced you. Now add me on that list. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me. So the the issue I wanted to raise is that uh, Muse Mateke is the chairman of the NRM of Chisoro District, but we all know that he's been a minister and a member of parliament and also five in this government and a very senior leader, national, but also particularly the Bafumbira uh, community. So wh when the president came to Chisoro, despite the big divide in the community, because uh, Muse Mateke came out clearly not to support the flag bearer, but he gave his reasons. Do you give it to him? He gave his reasons. What were the reasons? Uh, the, he was, I've, I've said he was, not, he was not satisfied with the outcome of the NRM the primaries. primaries. I've just said that. You mm. didn't listen. You listen. So, so he took a decision not to not support the flag bearer. And that was a very big uh, de, a big loss for the NRM fraternity because he's a strong uh, pillar in the community. But when the president came to Chisoro, he had that brief. And I talked twice, I think, on phone. He told us, I've talked to Mzee Chisoro. Before he came, I talked to Mzee Mateke on phone twice. This was uh, his opening remarks on the rally. <laughs> they talked on phone twice. And then when he came, he went home. And talked twice. Of course, I to see him. Phone. To <coughs> his home was at home, came, but also to commiserate. If you saw in the pictures, to pay his respects to the late Sarah Mateke's resting place. And then he came with him to the rally. He came with him to the rally and also with the, they also came with the independent candidate, Grace Akifeza, uh, and she also came for the rally. So the campaign, the, 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 the issue in, in Kisoro was that the independent that contested said she was aggrieved that, she, that the outcome of the primaries did not reflect our fairness but that she was still NRM. So we still have that contradiction if you've been following. To say we have a flag bearer, but you have a very strong-willed people who say, no, 
I was cheated, so we need to go back to the drawing board. But we could not stop the calendar of the campaign. So we went into the mud, and the outcome you all knew. So the president came to one, to campaign for the flag bearer, but two, to find a way of uh, saying, I hear you. I hear you, they are grieved because we are one family. And uh, he gave them a chance to be heard. I mean, uh, Muzei, Muzei Mateke spoke at the rally. He got up at the rally and was given, he had a chance to speak and he addressed the, the crowd. And even Akifeza was there, she was welcomed. They all, the, those who had considered as independents were there, they went and, and made the president and then they also took pictures with the president. In our campaigns as NRM, sometimes we, are, we have like four, three uh, things to deal with. The actual campaign, dealing with conflict resolution, and dealing with grievances because now they were saying you are you are we want to give you a seat you've not given us the industrial park so we are dealing with the government service delivery you are dealing with the broken uh, fairness in the primaries but you, you must also deliver a candidate and we, we could not run away we went through it until yesterday when i drove back meet after meeting women and all this because that's the role we have to do as leaders we have challenges we have work to do we have a manifesto and and field field pledges in in Ichisoro. all those played to the gallery by the end of the day uh, i want to say oscar i saw wandera i think on my phone and the night when i was traveling talking about the military and uh, the, the the audios that were on the on the on social media saying there was vote vote rigging and the military and i don't know what i want to say it on, on record the most peaceful one of the most peaceful by elections about because i've attended all whether it is dokolo or yam or Serere, i've been to all even now i'm coming from from kisoro kisoro was extremely peaceful except and for one explain, or two instances it was so peaceful for reasons that are clear this election was very competitive you know uh, in terms of uh, closeness so there's no place where there was a dominant mm. place secondly and the final result even the candidates and uh, let, let me let me pl let me give credit to the candidates the candidates were very respectful of each other in a way they also managed their uh, crowds and their uh, campaign because sometimes we, we get overwhelmed by the campaign teams the campaign teams you're doing this they're doing other things they are being rowdy so I, I really what candidates should do in 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 kisoro and i think we should be we should give credit to these uh, candidates of of the woman mp for kisoro by election they were very organized one day the audio you show us on the social media that you saw was brought to our attention it was in Masindi in 2021 Wait, ma it was in Huima. It wasn't in Ichisoro. So sometimes people, experts like you, you should uh, take off time mm -hmm. and go back <laughs> and look at the recording. That was election. Yeah, that was in Yakato. Mm -hmm. So when you go on radio to enforce it on TV, then you, you lose credibility because you should be up notch uh, with the right information. It was debunked quickly. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I was very, a bit disturbed that you were able to talk about that. So I'm, I'm coming from Chisoro. One, they, 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 they take away a very peaceful election. The second, very good and credible candidates. The third, we, 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 NRM, we have work to do. We've come back with homework. But most important, I think, for my reading, NRM is still very strong in Kisoro. There is no doubt about that. Leave alone the results. The community is, is happy. They, they only demand what's due to them. There is a lot of uh, manifesto and finished project, projects. And then, of course, Oscar, because it's, it, it, it borders two international borders, DRC and then Rwanda, uh, the Rwanda border was closed. Chanika for some time. It has opened. They see life. There's this life they are going on, but they're a bit, a bit conscious. They are not feared like they used to be. Now, Bunagana has been closed. This is the third year Bunagana is closed. So you find the restaurants that look like they were abandoned. You find the lodges. The biggest infrastructure there are lodges. People would cross borders to have fun to play Lingala music and all that, Congolese music. The place looks abandoned. And uh, the community there, they feel that their business, uh, the business has come down, their livelihood has now changed. So Bunagana is really quiet and uh, you see from their faces, they want governments to talk to each other mm. and they open the Bunagana okay. border. Yes. Uh.
the the uh, Derek is here, and, and, and you're most welcome to gang Derek Wandera. Uh, but just, just a small second for Derek to know and the others is that, yes, <coughs> the NRM flag bearer lost, uh, and therefore I came back with a loss, but a loss, but also with the hope because uh, Aki Feza Grace Gabiran, she's in NRM, and uh, she met us and she promised to come. That thing you hear that's not illegal, that NLM leaning, she's purely in a rim. I think we need just reorganize us so that the right people get their flags. By the end of the constitution now, she's not. So, so she's now suspended. coming to work with the NRM party and definitely... Isn't she suspended supporting. for standing so, as an independent? No, she's not suspended because by their we appreciate if you campaign this, this against the NRM. So I thought that I should make that clear have, so that you know, the people who meet Oscar in the... In the yeah. corridors and they celebrate the loss of NRM, <laughs> tell them that they should wait a bit. No, I did, we haven't I, I did lost that yet. for you. But also, we need to look at the civic competence. Uh, Oscar, I told my story here when I visited. Mm -hmm. Charles has worked at our home for the last 35 years digging. We didn't know where he comes from. He, the man comes by bus. We said, and I'm the one who organized this go, it is bad manners, go visit this guy in Bunagan at the border. Mm -hmm. We went as a family of Wajinganda. As soon as we arrived, I was cooking. Police shows up with two police patrols in Chisoro and they're asking me, why did you come to visit without notifying us? Chisoro is not different from Karamoja. It supports NRM, that is without a doubt, but they police it. You cannot do politics of any other group. The only time you, you can go to Chisoro is when you have a bail. I mean, if you can stop someone just visiting, those stupid police so found me. they knew that you had gone to... Chisoro. Yes, I don't know how, they, because I slept in the cavalry. But they found me in a banana plantation cooking a pirao. Said, why are you here? They started confiscating phones from my sisters who are recording them. So that's how barricaded political Chisoro is. That uh, the only politics known there is NRM politics. And unfortunately for them, we don't say we have politicians who speak their language. In fact, majority of them listen to radio station of Rwanda. Mm, they, they, they listen to Rwanda more than the, including when a Charles is at home in Rwanda. Mm. He continues listening to Chinyarwanda songs and everything from Rwanda. Not Chinyarwanda. Okay. It's Chinyarwanda in Uganda, mm. but from Rwanda. So it's, it's an iron. You see, there is no opposition politician who will go and win in Karamoja. In Karamoja, the contest is between NRM and independent. So the MPs from Karamoja who are independent are MPs who participated in NRM elections. Because these areas are politically barricaded. I remember the first time I visited Karamoja. We are a group of MPs. The first thing you do is to report to the RDC MPs. After reporting to RDC, you report to the DPC. Then they tell you, okay, you can move. They give you, so you move with them. So these areas are run like projects. So, but because of uh, competition even where you have no chance of winning if you are a political party you will have what we call or what they call dust candidates the only reason is you want to go there and speak to solo because you'll never have any other opportunity to ever speak to them so the absence of violence it is because nrm is competing against itself but also the voters in solo are largely like voting machines they are not emotionally involved in these campaigns as they go on. If you look at the videos of the candidates and the agents distributing the salt, um, it, it, I don't know whether it was during primary or after, openly. That was also 2021, it wasn't in this Yeah, but, but for me it doesn't matter. <laughs> for me it doesn't matter whether it was 2021. Okay. But, but, but the, 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 the level of civic competence of the people in each solo is not comparable to any other area. Even when they support you, they are not emotional, with the exception of a few. They just support us routine. This one we like, this one we don't like. Here, where people support and they are the ones driving a campaign, when you cheat, it's like you've cheated them. That's why you have to shoot and kill them and, 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 and arrest them. Because they don't look at this thing as a, a thing of the candidate. It is our thing. When you arrest Chagulani Niruoka, before you bring him to wherever, Kampala will erupt because they are the ones who are competing directly against you, mm. Mr. Seven. Okay. So you can understand the context of Chisoro and why things happen the way they are. And for a very long time, they will happen. Mm. But even in a normal campaign day, Oscar, there are areas where you have no support. In the last election in Chira, 
I won with 45,000 votes, followed by NOPO at 18. The NRM candidate got uh, 4,000. The state, because NRM is a state party, like UPC was, uh, in many respects. Even where they, they shouldn't exist, the state exists. The RDC will be there, the deputy RDC, the police, everybody. So they do the, the if they do that work in Kampala, I've told you I was in a tiny center in Wakiso. And the declaration forms of Honorable, my friend, Rosemary Seninde, are being collected by RDCs and district internal security officers. I was with his personal assistant and he was calling Chengera, call Diso, where is the DR form from Chengera? So we can pretend here that the election is in Uganda, even in Kampala. NRM candidates are state candidates, they receive state support, mm. the state institutions, the same thing that happened under Ocheno's government. No. So in Chisoro, uh, no any other party can operate there. Let's go they, to Ocheno. So, so the, the only moderating effect there is that uh, you have, uh, um, within NRM, you have different shades of opinion. You have Muzei Mateke, uh, who was with Ocheno in UPC when ministers actually, I told Ocheno when we were entering okay. here, Thanks much. that during the UPC time, ministers were ministers. And that's why Mateke is, is still, still adored there. Because you see, if a UPC, maker. we used to sing for them. When they visit our schools, it, you spend the whole week preparing to receive a UPC minister. You like because that, that minister uh, was a minister. If he gives you a school, but even uh, books today, pens are being given by M7. That's why I think his wife wanted to distribute sanitary pads uh, directly. So smaller things now are done by one man and his family. So that's why ministers are using this. But to take care of the UPC, because of the way the ministers were powerful, he still... Jo let's go to Joseph Osiano. Joseph, the, the big question is, and it, this has been affected, UPC has been affected by this. The NRM, they don't have, don't they have uh, uh, ability to sit down opposing factions and say, let's come to an agreement. Why run a campaign with an independent and a flag bearer and they are both from the same party and the president has an ear uh, for, for the independent. Remember, this started all with mm. your UPC. I don't know, these days you have three no, factions no, of UPC no, no, no. where you, you never get to meet, you never agree. So we, you, you particularly will not be able to blame NRM for failure to sit down together. Uh, yes, one, Oscar, Oscar. Can I give you information? Just one second. Mm. Uh, Honorable Semju has uh, explained the influences of these communities, but what's also unique about them that these are, are communities that are on border, international borders. So they'll be different, like Karamoja, Chisoro, they are on international borders. But what's important, what's so dominant, also so that is so influential in these communities, are the religious institutions. When you go, of course, when you go to Karamoja, you still find the strength of the Catholic Church and also the Protestant Church. Why? Because they are the ones actually that have had the enduring services for the community, education, uh, health centers, they are mainly those faith-based foundations. The same with Chisoro. Yeah, but also so we are, we, I'm telling you, you're talking <coughs> about to NRM, you're talking about to the government, but there's this big animal, the elephant in the room, the biggest and enduring influence in these communities are those religious institutions that have been able to deliver the community most needed services like health, school, like schools, and also faith. I, I wanted you to understand that the elephant that yes, is yeah. beyond the political divide. <coughs> and they, when, when the it. bishop or the catechist or whatever it is orders, that's that silence you saw. People will not ask questions. From the garden said, what have I been told? The one. Okay. Thank you for vote. information. Uh, I, I want yeah. to squeeze in Joseph before Religion. we finish this topic. Mm. Religion is a very big factor. You, you know, um, Oscar was with you yesterday at an event. It was a delight seeing you. I must put for the record that um, um, one of the chief guests was a former gangster called Norbert Mao. I must say that I was suitably impressed by your ability to to, to manage, uh, particularly sometimes a, a, a sophisticated crowd and sometimes one that could easily sometimes draw to the other side and you know you understand what i'm saying no i, I think this um, debate particularly when lydia 
provides me with information on religion. While I actually agree, and it was very central in, in, in Kisoro. And while, interestingly, actually, it is a, a bigger spread in uh, the whole of Kigese sub-region than I actually possibly thought way back to my little mini Tororo. Um, when it comes to the question of services, it's the case because uh, it's a manifestation of failure of the state. While for us, we went to these religious schools, up to the time, Ibrahim, that um, an average Ocheno could go to um, Chibuli Secondary School, uh, an Islamic school, um, uh, um, but you would not know, and it would not matter whether or not you're a Catholic and or a Protestant, but of course the faith is that. I went to Miri, a Protestant founder school. So uh, that's an indictment on NRA, that um, after 40 years, you fail to do what you're supposed to do as a government. It's not surprising that the population will stick to the local faith, faith communities as, as, as it were. Um, you know, uh, a, a long time ago, I guess, yeah. a good friend of mine was standing against Honorable Biandala and he lost. But uh, they gave me, they, they, in Luweri, yes, they gave, Biandala won it, beat him, hands down. Mm -hmm. But he gave me two minutes to speak and I said to people, you, you, you know there's no electricity here, there's no water. They, <laughs> they, they quickly took the microphone away from me. They said, <laughs> <laughs> we, they said you can't make these promises. I, Ibrahim, made, so made, right. Ibrahim made huge efforts to, to tarnish the image of UPC that left government 45 years ago. And we left this government and we said, okay, you guys also try. I'm after, yeah, after, yeah, after, yeah. after <laughs> in, a, in a way, you're right. right. You, you're right to that extent. Yeah. But so we, we, we left, meaning yeah, we were removed the, by, the we, we, we were removed unconstitutionally, but, um, you know, yeah. you were removed.